Okay. So we're going to do law signs. Um, you have seen this last year and the year before in um, geometry. So remember the law signs is like A over the sine of A equals B over the sine of B, um, which is also equal to C over the sine of C. Remember all that? Right? And then you just choose two of them and solve depending on the information that you're given, right? So we're going to do lots of cross multiplying. We're going to have to use our graphing calculators because um, these are going to be non unit circle values. Okay? So these are um, law of signs is used. You can use it for right triangles, but most of the time we use it for a non right triangle. So everything that we've done so far is right triangle trick. Okay? So that's why we use Sokotoa and Pythagorean theorem and things like that. Now we're going to move into non right triangles. All right? Um, so, let's just uh, begin. We're just going to do some examples today. So, let's say solve the triangle <clears throat> given uh, angle A is 55 degrees, angle B is 80 degrees, and side A is 12.5. I know we just talked about this kind of recently. Um, but you remember that when it says a lowercase letter, it's referring to the side. Um, and when it's an uppercase letter, it's referring to the angle. Okay, so they're not always going to have the angle symbols, so just keep in mind um, that notation there. So the first thing you want to do is you want to draw a triangle, right? Kind of just get an idea of what we got going on. So this is going to be a nice, easy picture. doesn't matter if it's drawn to scale. I'm going to call this angle B because it looks, in my picture, the most like 80 degrees to me. Um, so then we'll say this is A at 55 degrees, and then remember, side A will be the side across from that angle, so this is the 12.5. Everybody remember that? All that good stuff? Remember that the longest side will be across from the largest angle, the shortest side will be across from the shortest angle, or the smallest angle, okay? So now based on that, if we're going to use the law of signs um, to do this, right? And we are told that we have to solve the triangle. What does it mean to solve the triangle? What do you have to do? Yeah, find everything, right? So we're looking for um, angle C, side B, and side C. And remember, when we're solving a triangle, I want everything located in one spot for me. So make a nice box of information. Okay? Everybody agree that angle C would be the easiest piece to solve for first? Right? How many degrees in a um, triangle? 180, so we're going to subtract those two given angles, um, leaving us with what, 45 degrees? Okay, so far so good. Now again, any single time that you're trying to solve a triangle, it's always important that you're going to use the given information and not the information that you found, if possible, because what if you subtract it wrong? Okay, now some obviously you have to use it at some point, but if possible, use only the given stuff, okay? So, if I want to find, let, let's say, side B, I can use law signs, right? I have this piece of information that will create that proportion, right? That is a given piece of information where you have the side and the angle. So, I know that I can set up my, my proportion starting with 12.5 over the sine of 55 degrees, right? Now, if I want to find side B then I know B has to be in the numerator, and then in the denominator, don't I just have the sine of 80 degrees because that's going to be across from side B, that given piece of information, right? Okay, so now all you have to do is cross multiply because this is a proportion. So I'm going to have B times the sine of 55 degrees equals 12.5 times the sine of 80 degrees. At that point, you want to divide by the sine of 55. Now, in your calculator, when you put this in, do you have to be in degrees or radians? Degrees, because degrees are given, okay? So we're always going to be in degree mode in this unit, okay? So put your calculator in degree mode, and then type that in, and let's see what you get. Um, you might need to put this in parentheses in the numerator, okay? So it doesn't hurt to throw them around it. Go ahead, type that in, and see what you get. You can use a non-graphing calculator on this, too. I mean, you could use a scientific one. Did you get 15.028? Everybody able to get it in the calculator? It seems so simple typing it in, but I mean, that can be an issue. So make sure we're good. 
Any questions? Okay, so now we know side B is 15.028. So in order to solve for side C, we have to go back, right? So we're going to use the given information again. So I'm going to start with that 12.5 over the sine of 55 degrees. But this time I have to use my angle C. And this time I have to use information that I found, but I'm pretty confident in the subtraction. So C over the sine of... Um, 45 degrees. Now it is your choice. You could plug in, you know, square root of 2 over 2 there. It doesn't really behoove you though, right? Because you got to plug it in the calculator anyway. So I would just solve. So we're going to get C equals, you know, 12.5 times the sine of 45 degrees divided by the sine of 55 degrees. Right? I'm just cutting out that extra step of dividing. Everybody follow what I did there? And then you type that one into the calculator. And let's see what you get there. <coughs> Tiffany. Um, I'm kind of fine as long as you show me something. Like, I'm fine if you go right to this or if you show me this, but you got to show me something so I can give you partial credit um, if you need it. So, did you get 10.79? Everybody good there? Okay, so this is easy stuff, right? This is what you did back in geometry. It's not going to stay quiet at that level, okay? All right, so let's keep going. Can I move this page? Okay, so here's the deal. Sometimes when you're given information, um, you know, you're going to have different possibilities. So let's talk about how to determine how many um, triangles there are. Okay, so we're just going to call this example two. Um, determine the number of triangles possible. Okay, so now, first of all, how many possible triangles could there be? Well, there could be none, right? So the information they give you maybe doesn't form a triangle at all, okay? It's just not possible. There could be one in the case that we just saw, and we don't know why exactly there's one yet, but we're going to talk about that now. Or there could be two. Do you remember back in geometry when, you know, your teachers probably told you you weren't allowed to have the ASS case, no swearing in geometry? Well, now that we're in pre-calc, we're totally allowed to swear, okay? So you can have the SSA or the ASS case, all right? This is called the ambiguous case. Do you remember that from last year? The ambiguous case, did you learn about it? Yeah, I think you did, yeah? Okay, you probably will know once we start talking about it, it's all going to come back to you. Okay, maybe like a nightmare, I don't know. So, we've seen the case where we have one triangle. Okay, we just experienced that. Now, um, let's take a look at this. So, let's say our given information was the measure of angle A was 110 degrees. Um, a is 15.2 and B is 20. Okay, now in order to... to to determine if there are zero, one, or two triangles, you still start out the same way. You still start out using law of signs. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So A is given together. I have the side and the angle, so that's where I'm going to start. So I have 15.2 over the sine of 110 degrees. Okay, this is going to be equal to B, which is 20, over the sine of B. Okay, so this first step here is I'm looking for the angle. Um, going back, going back to this example real quickly, example one, this wasn't quite like this because I was given two angles in a side, so I could see what the other angle would have to be in order to force that triangle, right, in order to add to 180 degrees to form that triangle. So that's why that case is a little bit easier. But now in this case, I've been given two sides in an angle, potentially getting that ambiguous case. So that's what we're really looking for here. So we still cross multiply the same way. So I have 15.2 sine of B uh, equals 20 times the sine of 110 degrees. All right, so we're going to divide by that 15.2. Whoopsie, 15.2. OK, 
okay? So now, in order to put this into the calculator, what do you have to do? Because now what am I looking for? I'm looking for an angle. So how do I tell the calculator I need an angle? Yeah, the inverse of sine. So sine to the negative 1, right? And then we're going to type in that 20 times the sine of 110, which you might need parentheses around, divided by the 15.2. So go ahead and try to type that in, see what happens. What'd you get? An error, a domain error. So when that happens, that means that based on this information, you could not form a triangle. Okay? Now think about this. Look at the information that was given. Why can't you form a triangle from it? Jake? Well, because there's 180 degrees in triangle. Okay. Angle A is 180 degrees. Right. Uh, side A is 90 degrees. Right. So looking at this, um, there, there can only be one obtuse angle in a triangle, right? Mathematically, it can't add to more than 180. So that means that um, angle B has to be smaller than angle A, right? But side B is bigger than side A. So does that make sense? No. So right away you should have been able to recognize that, but it's okay if you didn't. Sometimes it's not, you know, quite as obvious maybe. And then you just plug it in, and if it gives you no solution or a domain error, that means that there is no triangle here, okay? Uh -huh. So no triangle could be formed with that information. Kelly? So like on, this, on the test, could you just like from the beginning be like, this isn't... Yes, you could. You could just say no triangles. Okay. Don't worry, there won't be a question like this on the test. <laughs> okay, but in the homework there might be. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so now let's go with this scenario. Okay, um, the measure of angle A is 42 degrees, um, A is 22, and B is 12. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set up law of signs, we're going to see if we can get an answer. So 22 over the sine of 42 degrees equals 12 over the sine of B. Cross multiply the same way, isolate the sine of B. Okay, keep in mind that when you're putting this in the calculator, you definitely need to be using the inverse. Everyone see I just cut out a step there, you're okay with that? Okay, um, so what does this one tell you? When you put this in the calculator, do you get an answer? Did you get an answer here? Yeah, what'd you get? 21.406. Okay, okay. now... Here's the deal. Anytime you've been given two sides in an angle, you have to do this, right? Because it's going to say solve the triangle. So you have to use law of signs. You have to start out deciding whether you have zero, one, or two triangles. So now at this point, we've decided, well, we at least have one. Now we have to determine if there's the possibility of having two or if it's the possible ambiguous case. So here are the steps to do that. What you're going to do is you're going to find the supplement of this angle. So you're going to take 180 degrees and you're going to subtract the angle that you just found. Okay? So find the supplement. Step one. <clears throat> okay, so this gives us 158.594. Um, degrees. Five, nine, four. Nine, four. Okay. Everyone with me so far? Okay. Now, after you do that, you add back in the given angle. So now step two, you add the given angle. Okay, so when we do that, we get 200.594 degrees. So far, so good? 
Okay, now you compare that to 180. So is this number bigger or smaller than 180 degrees? This, you're doing so good. So this is greater than 180 degrees, okay? Now you got to interpret what that means. So step three, if your answer is greater than 180 degrees, there is only one triangle. And if your answer is less than 180 degrees, then there are two triangles. So that means, based on our information, our answer is greater than 180 degrees, so this is a case with only one triangle. Okay, everybody understand the test, everyone understand the steps, no matter what, you have to start out with law of signs. If you get one angle, you have to then see if there's a possible second triangle. So to do that, you take 180, you subtract the angle you found, which is finding the supplement. Once you do that, you add the given angle back. Then you compare it to 180. If it's greater, you have one triangle. If it's less, then you have two triangles. If you have two triangles, all we have to write is two triangles. If that's all the question was asking you to do, yes. Okay? Now we're going to see that right now. We're going to see two, two triangles and what that looks like. Okay, can I move this paper? Yeah, okay. Okay, good times. Good times are coming right now. <clears throat> All right, solve um, the triangle. Uh, the measure of angle A is 30 degrees, A is 15, um, and B is 20. Okay, so now we have, hopefully you can recognize, the potential of the ambiguous case because we've been given an angle in two sides, okay? So the first thing you should do is you should draw a picture, okay? Because, again, we're solving the triangle, so we're trying to find all the information that's missing. So let's just kind of get a visual of what's going on here. Okay, so here is A, it's 30 degrees. Uh, side A is 15. I'm going to put B here and make this 20. Okay, so now I'm gonna start just solving the triangle just like I did the very first problem. I'm gonna start into the law of signs, okay? This will also help me to determine if there's two triangles, okay? So I start out with 15 over the sine of 30 degrees equals 20 over the sine of B. Okay, we're going to cross multiply, we're going to divide. We end up with the sine of B equals 20 times the sine of 30 degrees divided by 15. Okay, so now I'm ready to enter that into the calculator using the inverse, making sure I'm in degree mode. <clears throat> and when you do that, what did you get for B? That's what I also got, 41.81 degrees. Okay. Now we have to test because we're not sure. It doesn't say, like, it's not going to say, hey, heads up, this is the ambiguous case. Okay, it's not going to do that. It's just going to say solve the triangle. So we've got to check. So now we're going to do our little test. So we're going to find the supplement first. So I'm going to take 180 degrees and I'm going to subtract my um, angle I just found. Okay, when you do that subtraction, you get 138.19 degrees. What's the next step? Add that given angle back. Okay, so now I'm going to add 30 degrees. When I do that, I get 168.19 degrees. Now it's time to compare it to 180. Is it less than or greater than? Less than. Great. This is not great news for us, okay? 
because this means that there are two triangles. So there's like double the work to do for this problem is all it is, okay? It's just more work, but it's not hard work. It's just more work. So that means there are two triangles here, okay? Does everyone see how I determine that? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of keep this in the back of our mind, okay? Like, now I got this other triangle I'm going to have to find in a little bit, but for now I'm just going to keep going down this path of solving this triangle, okay? Yeah? How do for the first example you didn't have to test for this case? Um, because I knew there was only a one triangle because there were two angles given in a side. So it forces you into only that one triangle that can be formed, okay? So the only time you're really worried about this is when you're given two sides and an angle, okay? okay? Um, so now I'm going to keep going with solving, okay? So the next easiest thing to find, I'm just going to kind of fill this in as it goes, 41.81 so degrees. So now the next um, piece I should probably find would be the measure of angle C, right? Because that's just simple subtraction. So I'm going to do 180 minus um, the 30 degrees, minus the 41.81 degrees, okay, giving me 108.19 degrees, everyone agree? Okay. The last piece of information I have to find is side C, okay? So I'm going to use the given information, so I'm going to do 15 over the sine of 30 degrees equals um, C, I don't know, over the sine of 108.19 degrees. All right, so go ahead, cross multiply, start solving, see what you get. Did you get um, 28.501? Yes? Okay. So this is like case one. Okay. Now, let me show you what's happening here. Okay. So... We are um, going to cut, let me see if I can, I rotate this like this. I'm going to have a hard time seeing it. Okay, <clears throat> so what's happening here when you have the ambiguous case? Can, we, can I move this up? Okay, so what's going on here is that here's like our case one. This is the triangle that we had, okay? And when we solve for our angle, um, we're gonna, I'm going to switch up our angles so I can talk about it a little bit easier. But let's just pretend like this was angle B that I just found, right? And originally when I found it, it was the 41.81 degrees, okay? And angle A was um, 30 degrees, okay? So let's just pretend angle A is here and angle B is here. And this is what happened, okay? So here's our case one of everything that we just found. But with the ambiguous case, it says that there's actually another triangle that could be formed. And what happens with that triangle is that this is the triangle that's actually formed by these same measurements. Because remember, we were given angle A and two sides. My two sides haven't changed. My angle hasn't changed, right? But the length of this side has now changed. So what happened when you found that 41.81 degrees was that it wasn't actually inside the triangle over here. It's actually on the outside of the triangle over here. And therefore, to find the second case, you have to start with finding the supplement of the angle. Because the 41.81 degrees that we found is actually on the outside of this triangle. And we need the angle on the inside of the triangle. Do you see what happened there? You want me to go through that one more time? Or are you okay? One more time. Okay, so originally when we first started working this, you know, you just get the same kind of information that we did before. You find this 41.81 degrees, which would be here. Notice, this side is the same, this side is the same, this angle is the same. So this is my given information. It's like this angle and then these two sides, okay? When I find that angle, it's inside the triangle, and then I just keep moving through the list. I find this angle, and then I find that side. 
okay? But with the ambiguous case, the same measurements could exist if you were to actually form a triangle that looked like this, okay? My angle is still the same. I know I just pushed this over here, but I didn't move this angle. My angle is still the same, and my two side lengths are the same. But now this triangle gets formed, this little triangle right here. So the angle of that 41.81 degrees is actually on the outside of this triangle, and I need the angle right here. So to do that, you have to subtract it from 180. So that is the first step in solving the next triangle, and that is the only hard part about this, is remembering this. That's it. Okay, so now we're going to shift gears and we're going to move in to case two. Okay, so the very first thing you do with case two, this is where you start. You start by finding the supplement of the first angle you found. Okay? So that's where we begin. So this 41.81 degrees was the very first thing that we did in this whole problem. So you just find the supplement of it. So 180 minus the 41.81 degrees. Because that was the very first thing we did. It was the only thing that we could do because it was the only information that we had enough um, pieces to find. Okay, so it's always what you did first. When you subtract that, you get 138.1, whoopsie, 0.19 degrees. This now becomes your angle B. Okay? All right, so now this is our new angle B. Yes, Kelly? Because we didn't find angle C until we assumed that angle B was inside the triangle. Okay? I can't move the yellow part because this is the angle I was given. So I'm assuming this is the angle that I was given and these two sides are given. So none of these measurements can change. The only thing that can change is this can move, forcing that angle to change. Okay? So now, now I'm ready to go. Back right into the law of signs. Easy to go, right? How do you find measure of angle C? So now think about it. Your original information didn't change. So the only thing that changed, and I, I, I drew this picture. I wish I would have drawn it differently, but it, I guess it doesn't matter at this point. The only thing that changed is angle B now. A is still the same. Measure of angle A was still given. It's still 30 degrees. Side A is still 15. And side B is still 20. So I'm still looking for the same new information. And to do it, I just have to find that new angle B. So now that I found angle B, I can take it um, away from 180 along with the given angle. Same thing I did before. Okay, that's going to give me 11.81 degrees. So now I know angle C, now I need a side C, right? I have enough given information to create that proportion. So 15 over the sine of 30 equals C over the sine of 11.81 degrees, which is my new side or angle C. Do the same thing we've been doing, we cross multiply. Okay, putting that in the calculator, in degree mode, making sure we have parentheses if we need them. Did you get 6.14? And this is case two. Okay, so just take that in for a second. Notice this problem is like double the work, right? Because you're finding two triangles here. It's not difficult once you know the steps. So the very first thing we did was we had to check to see if there was even two triangles. Okay. Once we decided that, we still solved the first triangle the same way we've been doing everything. Then we moved into case two. So all you have to do is find the supplement of the original angle and then keep going like you normally would. 
Okay. Good stuff. Last thing. You ready? This is gonna we're gonna end on an easy note. Uh, yeah. Oh sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna talk about is the area of a triangle, which you've known for a long, long, long time. But now we're gonna switch it up. Now, before, um, hopefully, we all know that in order to find the area of a triangle, you have to take one half the base times the height. Remember that formula? <laughs> hopefully. Okay, now we have a new formula. Because sometimes you're not given the base or the height or able to find the base or the height. Okay, so now these new formulas, there's, there's three of them, but they're really all the same. You just can manipulate them, okay, depending on the information. So A equals one half B C times the sine of A, or one half A times C times the sine of B, or one half um, A times B times the sine of C. Now don't get overwhelmed by this because there's three of them because really there's only one of them to remember, right? You take the two sides, you multiply them together, and then you multiply that by the sign of the other angle that's not given, and you multiply it all by half or divide it by two. That's all it is, okay? So notice how it goes. Every piece is included, right? The side that's not given is the angle you use, okay? So now... Let's find this. Let's try it. So example four. Um, by the way, these will not be given to you. You do have to memorize these. Okay? So no more formulas are being given to you. Same thing with the law of signs. You have to memorize that. Okay? Um, find the area um, of the triangle given um, the measure of angle C is 57 degrees and A equals five, I don't know why I have all these ands, but and B equals six. So we've been given A, B, and angle C. You just plug up those pieces in. So the area is gonna equal one half, five times six, times the sine of 57 degrees. So 15 times the sine of 57 degrees and then type that in. Or type the whole thing in, it doesn't really matter. You should get 12.58, did you? Now we weren't given units here, so just write units squared. We know that all area has square units, so that way you don't forget. How are we doing? Questions? <laughs>